uh, let's invite uh, uh, Guy and Can on uh, on stage. Hey, hello. How are you? Hi. How are you? I'm doing well. Doing well. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's uh, let's not wait uh, one more minute. So you have all the time for your presentation. Uh, can you uh, share your slides with us? Your screen. So I asked to share. So uh, then you should see uh, uh, sharing the desktop. Just the application. Just the. Where where do I click for it? I'm sorry, I don't see it. So, so sorry. Uh, uh, below our photos, we have four icons. Uh, from left to right is the third one, a kind of screen with a red bar. Red gotcha. bar. There we go. Okay. One second. Can you see that now? Yeah, we can see it. We can see it uh, soon full screen. You just uh, you have know. a stop. Show. Yeah, you have a you know a a quick stop banner. I see it. Yeah, yeah. Can you I hide see it on the bottom? Yeah, can you hide it because we see it on the screen? Just hide. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Perfect. The stage is you yours ready? for twenty five. Thank okay. you. Okay. All right. Hi everybody. It's uh, great to be here. Um, I just want to talk a little bit today about. Um, API management and a little bit about Tide and about the choices that we've made in terms of API management. So um, really great and uh, look forward to your question and answers, questions after we do the presentation. Cheers. A um, little bit about Tide. Tide, we are, we're an international company. Um, we started in the UK and we are focused on helping our members save time and money um, by building the leading business financial platform. Our mission is to save business time and money so they can get back doing what they love. Our, our vision is to be recognized as the world leading business financial platform. And we wanna be available 25% of the SMEs by long tail, um, B2B only, uh, globally and number one in the U U UK SME challenger. So we don't view ourselves as a bank, we view, view ourselves as a banking financial platform and our strategy is based upon six strategic imperatives, which really drive our thinking about APIs. Uh, but we're gonna talk a little bit more about that in a minute, but let me take you through this first. So first of all, we're SME only, we're just B2B. We're just focused on the long tail in terms of our customers. Um, second point is we're full value chain. We're covering the financial operating system and we really wanna facilitate those transactions and we really wanna facilitate what our members need. Third point is really important is really around open platform and around open banking standards. Uh, that's really exciting and it's great to see the proprietary nature of banking become much more open, PDS2, et cetera. Um, it's really exciting that we can do that. And because of that, we can focus on the connectivity orchestration. The fourth tenet is really important is network effect. So again, we wanna leverage as low multi-home and two-sided. So think of marketplaces, think of uh, leveraging financial transactions, think of subscriptions. It's really being able to leverage that network effect. Um, heavy investment in machine learning at Tide and our values were data-driven. So we're really, really focused hard on machine learning and really optimizing for that. And then um, the last thing is digital first, not only digital only. Um, so we really, really wanna focus on digital first and um, be available at the digital touch points of where our members expect it. So as an example, with the device itself through the web, and we wanna basically make our services available at all those points with the corresponding APIs. So a little bit about the size, this is just for the UK market. So in January, 2020, we had 130,000 members, we're at a quarter million. So just let that sink in for a minute. So pre-C19 in January, we were at 130. We're a digitally native company. We're now at a quarter million. So almost a doubling in a very short period of time. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that we really rock APIs and we are digitally native and we very much cloud native and very much adaptive. You can see also the massive growth in API volume request during this period. And then now I wanna talk a little bit about the API journey at Tide. And when I came to Tide a little more than a year ago, 
we didn't have an API gateway or we had one, but it was just kind of bad. And so we said, hey, we want to really look for an API gateway. So what do we look for? So here were the technical considerations. And for us, it was about security, scale, agility, and operability. So let me talk a little bit about those under the technical considerations. Um, members trust us with their money and their business. So we couldn't compromise on security, right? We wanted to build it in support of auth standards, which was um, OAuth 2, JWT, OIDC. Extremely important because we wanted to avoid vendor lock-in and we wanted to basically make sure that we really could do something effective. We wanted native connectors for common auth providers. We also wanted a secure gateway for to backend communication. In other words, we wanted to be able to broker all communication through the gateway, whether it was internal or external. FAPI was important. And then we wanted integrating management with uh, UI API with existing enterprise security, Okta. So we use Okta in the background. So um, basically we have a zero knowledge or zero trust infrastructure, cloud native. And we wanted to basically interface with Okta and Okta manages that for us. So we wanted to integrate to that again for our internal side. Scales, listen, the membership doubled in X months and that will accelerate. So we think that we know that Tide will double again every 12 to 18 months. So we needed something that could scale with us. And we wanted test data to prove it. And we wanted to be configurable resource caching. So we wanted to be able to cache the queries and cache the APIs and cache the requests that we that are important for us. Really important part of the part of the uh, architecture. Agility um, to keep our lead position, we need to iterate quickly. So listen, we needed to be able to support transformations and aggregation, um, and we needed that ad adaptability, and we needed the ability to script adding API manage to speed up API development, whether that was sidecars with the API gateway or whether that was working with the particular vendor to basically make, make to look at their roadmap to basically support us. And then operability, I think is probably gets overlooked a lot, but it has to be always on without costing the earth. So we are a growing company. We're not, you know, we're, we're, we're growing and scaling um, we wanted suitable deployment options. We wanted management for APIs and automation and configuration. And we really, what was real, also really important was logging analytics, right? Tracing, and then ex support for external data syncs so because we push stuff into data lake. Uh, everything is data driven for us. So that was extremely important. Business considerations, right? We really looked at four things. So documentation and training, profitability, um, excuse me, portability, sorry, uh, portability, um, operating model and cost. So let me talk a little bit about that. Documentation and training. Um, what's the quality of the documentation, training courses? Is there existing experience, right, with underlying technologies of the gateway? And does the gateway require a niche skill set to operate? In other words, is it built or configured in a language that doesn't fit tied, right? Um, profit portability. How complex and costly would it be to swap vendors? In other words, we wanted to avoid vendor lock-in on number two. So we wanted our gateway to basically be agnostic so that if there was a need in the future to swap it out, we could put another one in. Operating model. So um, on the prem versus host versus uh, SaaS, what operating model is the most suited for this organization? We manage ours. We run ours in the AWS estate. Although SaaS is an excellent option here as well for operating, it should not be overlooked. And then cost, and then how much does it cost? And um, what's the cost of upskilling and running the engineering team and maintaining the gateway? In other words, how do you really live that? And how do you basically absorb that cost of operating, not only the licensing fees? So, all right. And because of that, we favored gravity, right? Gravity was who we picked and it's really ticked the boxes for us. And you know, this is what we get with Gravity, um, going back to that. So on the security, uh, extensive feature set, right? Uh, compelling integration with Gravity um, account management, right? AM, the AM solution. And it's open source with a well understood technology stack. So that's really been a benefit for us. It's been a benefit for us on the security and deep diving that making sure it's a good solution. 
scale uh, reactive architecture. Uh, it, it scopes well under stress. And second point, ideally, this should be proven performance under load, right? So we wouldn't recommend that you do anything without doing it under load. We did it under load. Doing it against production is always important. Uh, it doesn't matter how well you can mock a load test. Prod is the ultimate test. Agility, right? A developer portal uh, where the engineers have a place to store and query all the API documentation. We get that with Gravity. And then extensible plugin capability. So we build our own plugins, we build sidecars, and we basically can do extensive customization within the gateway platform itself. And then under the operability, we have API analytics and monitoring, gives a 360 view, right, of Tide's APIs. And then load deployment complexity, I think this is also really important. Uh, it complements Tide's continuous delivery ethos. I mean, we we really focus hard at Tide about lead time. Lead time being one of the Dora metrics in terms of time to market. And we want a team to be able to ship whenever they're ready. So that's really, really important. And we've accomplished that with the API and the SAPI's uh, uh, services and API teams. And the Tide roadmap, let's talk a little bit about this. So in the spring of 2020, uh, we did the POC with API Gateway. Uh, with Gravity, right? Uh, in the summer, uh, we went live with our new API gateway. We took 100% of the traffic. So um, it was about from the time we said yes to going live, um, I think it was about a uh, two, two and a half month process there. Um, POC with Gravity Access Management, again, with the AM product that was in the summer. Um, we really liked that. In the autumn, we're, we've got the first use cases of uh, management live enabling collaboration and business banking. So this is with the AM product and basically launching uh, team cards for Tide. And then we have a rich multi-user for directors, collaborators, employees. And this is really identity management for our Tide members so we can have a hierarchy within our structure, a non-trivial based enterprise feature, but really, really important for Tide. And then we're gonna take the platform global in 21. So we'll launch a new market in India in 21. So that's a, that's the Tide roadmap. And traffic and performance. Um, speed has remained high with heavy traffic. Um, the average gateway response duration is about 125 milliseconds. The average re uh, downstream microservice response is about 98 milliseconds. Um, and then the gateway latency is about 27 mil milliseconds now. And then we've got a, about right now, we were at 158 million requests handled by the gateway um, during that chunk of time between September and October. So um, it's a lot of volume. I know, I'm sure people in the audience and members have a lot more volume, but as tight, as I said, we'll be doubling in terms of uh, members about every 12 months and the traffic correspondingly will not double. It could triple and you know maybe four times as much volume in the next 12 months. And that's it. That's it for me on the presentation. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation. Can you unshare your screen? So for the questions, uh, at least we have a, people see our faces a little bit better uh, to answer. So how do I unshare? So you click on the same button as before? Yeah, that's okay, it. There we go. Okay, there we go. Okay, so good. The first question is that uh, how uh, open source, because Gravity is open source, right? But how open source has been important in the, into the decision you, you, you had for API management? Yeah, for us, it was, it was absolutely, uh, I think, one of the biggest criteria. It wasn't a, we, we did not not look at uh, non-open source providers, but I'm a huge believer in open source. You know, as a CTO, I like that um, that ecosystem. At Tide, we uh, we basically practice internal open source with all our code, and then we also have a heavy reliance on the open source community in terms of the products and features we deliver. So how how we look at it is we always want to find open source first, and if we then based on the other criteria, if we can't find something that meets that criteria, we'll then maybe look at something that's not open source, but we were very lucky in that we were able to uh, find gravity and it met the criteria and uh, suit, suit our purposes and ticked all those boxes. 
Yeah, uh, we have also a comment from Andrew who say he loves the Tides product services, but he wants the ability for multi-user access to accounts, <laughs> right? So do you have any? Yeah, so Andrew, we're working on it. So you saw on that roadmap, um, we're gonna basically be delivering that. So um, our expectation is end of November, we'll finish development and then we'll start um, basically um, uh, rolling that out to members probably towards the end of the year, definitely in Q1. And um, yeah, it's going to give you exactly. And so we're building that in partnership with Gravity and using their access management, identity access management uh, for Tide so that we can basically uh, provide those services. So it's coming. It's on the roadmap. I'm sorry it's not there yet, but uh, yeah, thanks for that question. Great question. Uh, two questions on governance. The first one is that is uh, uh, how are how are you organized internally to deliver, let's say, uh, API management with uh, let's say with speed and safety, right? Uh, uh, you know how the how is the governance uh, 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 designed? Yeah. So first of all, I think when before you talk about governance, we do governance with a small G, um, and meaning that the teams themselves. So. All right, let's talk a little bit about microservices and how we're organized. So what we do is we have uh, Tide is organized in business areas, right? That are largely autonomous. And what, what we have is all the teams sit in those business areas. Each team has a set of uh, services that they manage and they run. And they do the full life cycle for those services. They do the coding. They do the production, the production support. Any defect that comes in prod, they jump right on it. So they, they have that. So if you take a team, as an example, let's say five, six people, a pizza sized team, they might manage, let's say five or six services, right? Those microservices. Under that model, they, under the internal tied internal open source model, any team has the right to make a change in, to their code, but the PR request flows back to them, to the team that owns that service and they review it and they, they provide that approval, right? So additionally, they also, the team in terms of the service catalog, they also have the responsibility for the security of that. So we have a CISO, a guy named Ben, right? Who is a phenomenally great guy and we, we're really lucky to have Ben with us. And what happens is that in the pipelines themselves, we run some tools, Sneak is one, that basically looks at any non-conforming based malicious code or non-conforming based um, in possible injections or injection scenarios, particularly at the API level. And the team has responsibility to basically fix those in order to conform to definition of done. So our definition of done is punched out really clearly in terms of conformance to the API and the production implications for that. Additionally, APIs also under the service catalog, we have continually pen tests and screen tests going against, against those all the time, ethical hacking, et cetera. So again, if a team, if a vulnerability comes from the CISO, it's really simple. The CISO launches, he drops into your backlog a ticket that says, hey, you guys got to fix this because you've got a production or potential production security incidents. They jump on it and fix it. So the APIs and the endpoints, you can imagine because we're financial services, right? The sensitivity of those endpoints are extremely important. So as an example of that, our banking provider that we partner with is called ClearBank. And we integrate with ClearBank on the bank. Now, Ty holds the account of record, but we're, a, we're not a bank. We're a banking platform. And so we integrate with that. So you can imagine the security and sensitivity of those APIs and the importance of monitoring them to ensure that they're clean and that you know, people have access to their bank account and that someone hasn't taken over their bank account. So I hope I answered that. I'd be happy to take more questions in terms of governance and structure. Yeah, of course, uh, some people in our community uh, are calling a little bit what you uh, uh, mentioned on APIs, like API ops, like the APIs part of the DevOps, right? So of the, you know, the DevOps practice and DevOps culture. So, uh, so yeah, and we have talks about it this afternoon in a technical track. Also a question about, you know, with open source, some most of the time, uh, at least uh, uh, teams like begin to start without, uh, it's really a, a a top uh, a bottom up approach sorry it's really a bottom up approach with open source teams try and then they go to see the manager and say look yeah i've tried to do something uh, uh you know let, let's use that or was it a, a top top down approach like you wanted to have a, a api management practice and you like benchmark and you you decided to to use a open source gravity solution yeah so um in terms of the the, the choice about saying hey we need to get better 
with API managements and we need a, a world-class dedicated API gateway, that definitely, you know, I was driving that decision. In terms of the selection of Gravity, it was very much a team-based, it was bottom-up. So we threw, you know, we threw a lot of, a lot of uh, vendors in that, in that mix and we kicked the tires with a lot of them. So, um, and it was then, it was a question of just the team, how much velocity the team had working with those particular cho different choices and the velocity of it. And by the way, there were some really, really good choices out there, right? So um, we, um, you know, it's, it's amazing, you know, when you look at the API, API management platforms and you look at their evolution over the last five, six years, it's, it's remarkable, right? It's, uh, it's gone from being something pretty nascent with Google really dominating with Apogee, right? Um, now that it's become a, a very competitive landscape. So that's really, really exciting to see. Yeah, Atai, do you practice uh, drink on champagne? Uh, uh, um, 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 how do you call it? Uh, drink on champagne policy it means that, meaning that what you expose to others, it's what you have internally, or do you make yeah. specific product uh, for outside external API consumption? Yeah, I, 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 uh, I like how the French refer to it as drink your own champagne. In the U.S., we would say eat your own dog food. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is the positive, this is the positive way of yeah. uh, presenting the eat your own dog food, yes. Yeah, so in that, in that model of the teams having ownership in the service catalog of those services, they own the full life cycle of those APIs. So that's, that's extremely important. So they they eat the dog food and they drink the champagne. So they they, <laughs> they, 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 they do both, right? And and hope hopefully there's more champagne than there is dog food. So yeah, yeah. As French, I would say that uh, champagne's probably doesn't go well with dog food, but no, it, right? no, ab absolutely not. You don't <laughs> don't want to do. That. You'd be wasting the champagne if you're doing it with the dog food. <laughs> So, um, uh, oh, there is another one from Andrew. Don't get high on your own supply. <laughs> That's another one for drinking on champagne, eat your own dog food. Don't get high on, on your own supply. Yeah, from Scarface. Yeah, thank you, Andrew, for, for, for <laughs> uh, Yeah. Um, uh, so, yeah, do you have uh, internal API guidelines to manage APIs in a consistent way in the company? Yeah, so um, we do. And, and we're getting better at those. So um, I talked a little bit about our process in terms of the team level where we, prior to a sprint starting, we look at and conform to definition of ready, right? I think everyone's conform everyone understands that. And then we have a conformance around definition of done. For us, the next chapter of our story at Tide is really to build the automation in the pipelines, right? That can look at conforming versus non-conforming APIs. Because, you know, listen, I, APIs are extremely complicated. They're, it's extremely easy to build them poorly. It's extremely hard to build them well. So, you know, I think we all strive to have kind of a stripe level, you know, APIs where you can do extremely powerful things in just two or three lines of code, right? And, but that's a journey. You can't, I always look at it as yoga. I use the metaphor of yoga. I'm a yoga pra practitioner. And you can't say to an engineering team on day one, hey, we want you to do a free standing handstand in the middle of the room your first week of practice. The reality is it takes years to build up to that, right? And you've got to basically methodically go through the basics. We take that approach at Tide. We really are team oriented and we really believe the team, the governance of, of that, of those APIs is really, we focus really very powerfully on outside in in terms of that API performance. So let me give you an example of that. Um, we really focus on outcomes, right? As opposed to someone sitting there saying, this is a good API. So we really lean into the metrics. So how, what's the responsiveness of that API, right? And our internal threshold is all API traffic internally within Tide all needs to be under 100 milliseconds. If it's not under 100 milliseconds, you can't go live with it, right? That's one. And if it is over 100 milliseconds, we need a really good reason for that because we, we really focus on the customer experience. Remember, the Tide, Tide vision you know, and our, our mission was to give time back. The best way we can give time back is to basically make sure that our app, right? If I go into it right now and I log in. It's logging in. Oh, 
So that's one of the best ways for us to give time back is those APIs that support that login are fast, right? It's really simple. The other thing we focus on, really focus in is lead time. So um, it's it's it could be amazing to build a beautiful API, but we also need to get it live. So we don't want to get caught up in academic discussions about what a great API is. We want to basically do, we want to be focused on the outcome and really look at the base structure and the performance of that API and then get it live. And then we always practice a policy around polishing. So once it's out there, right, the teams polish it and they make it better and better incrementally. So. Yeah, yeah, and actually API days community, you know, the 200,000 API practitioners that we have actually uh, led the discussion about what is a great API only to our events because when they go back, you know, uh, <laughs> now it's not the time, right? So API days is made for that. What to to have two days, uh, like at uh, different events to have the time to think about that. Thank you very much for the presentation. I think it was uh, quite uh, complete uh, and insightful about how you do things. And I hope it inspired a lot of people about how they could manage APIs on their own, uh, right? And also about the decision to use open source or not, because some companies are afraid to use open source mm -hmm. solutions. But it's it on some parts, it becomes more and more commodity. So uh, yeah, uh, why not, uh, why not uh, uh, using open source when we're able to manage it, right? That's also another right. question. Yep. Yeah, uh, we are uh, uh, we are out of time. If I, we are a little bit over, but it was so insightful. I didn't want to <laughs> to to, right. to cut it. Well, merci, merci beaucoup. Yeah, merci beaucoup. <laughs> de rien. Thank you very much. You're